I, I love this essential cinema and, and I've heard from Harmony Corinne when he did Gummo. When he did Gummo, there was a scene where there's a picture on the wall, I think in a trailer home or so, I mean real white trash families and there's a lot of cockroaches under this uh, picture and they crawl out and the crew was freaking out. Next day everybody came in this kind of toxic out suit outfits like in Fukushima now in Japan. They arrived on the set like that as if it was uh, an, a nuclear wasteland and, and Harmony was so angry. He took off all his clothes. He had only a speedo on and directed with his speedo on. The Paul Holdengraber Show filmed at Andals, Fifth Avenue. Even in a small film like that, people stepping on each other's toes and light people milling around. And the French cinematographer got upset about all this and he said, Harmony, let's throw everyone out and it should be me, you and one fucking light bulb. And that was how, and, and yes, you know, and this me, you, and one, one light, fucking light, light bulb. No, bulb. 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 One fucking light and bulb. And you know, this... Um, and that's cinema. Th that cinema, in, in yes. some sense, it's you, another person, yes. and a fucking light bulb when you are in, on, uh, in, those, in those cells yes. in death row. And, it's also you... you do the and, essential. And the essential also in the yeah. caves of forgotten dreams. Yes. You're back to the essential of yeah. those caves and those yes. drawings. That and are three people with me and doing it in 3D. Three people were allowed with me. Because you couldn't bring more human presence to those 32,000 year old yes. caves. Exhalations, the breath of people, sweat of people creates a mold on the walls and starts to destroy the images that have been preserved for 32,000 years. And the climate has been unchanged for uh, millennia. So, and, and you, you just uh, have to do the essentials. And that's, that's the beauty of cinema. And that's what, uh, that is what creates uh, lasting films. When you go only for the essentials, only for what touches us very deep inside of our... Into the abyss of, of human yes. beings, into their soul. Yeah. Yeah. There's another dictum, I, I think it might be Hölderlin or it might be yours, I can't quite tell anymore, where you say, the poet must not avert his eyes. That is my dictum, yes. It might as we well do not, be yes, Do not live, do not live in the ivory tower of poetry and, and conceptual things. And as a poet or as a reader, you have to live in the real world and you have to, you have to understand what's going on in, in our lives that surround us. What is going on in WrestleMania, for example? Why is it so popular? What is going on there? We have to look, uh, uh, <laughs> we better have to look at what is Glenn Beck doing in his TV show. Um, we, we have to understand that the context in which we are living. Uh, and of course, uh, my context is not only the context of a poet who must not avert his eyes. Uh, I try to tell people travel on foot and I can only condense it in a very brief dictum. Uh, the world reveals itself to those who travel on foot. You do understand the world the traveler on foot understands the world because it opens itself up like an open book. Partly also because by walking on foot, you come into contact with others and they tell you their stories. And coming on foot means there's no small talk anymore. I stop at a farmhouse because my canteen is empty and I'm thirsty. I'm really thirsty and there's no creek or nothing. You have to stop and ask, can I use your faucet to fill my canteen? Or maybe if you do not want to enter your home, can you please fill my canteen with water? And they would do that and they would come out and say, uh, sir, where do you come from? And I would say, I come from the village of Sachrang, but where is that? Yeah, in Bavaria, but that's more than a thousand kilometers away. This is how did you come? Yes, how did? And I say, well, I came on foot. 
and all of a sudden there's a, a reflex that is already dead, a reflex, an ancient reflex of, of grandiose hospitality, that you are protected, you are the, the wanderer, you are the pilgrim, and you will be invited in the house, and you will hear not just some, some stories, everyday things, you hear the essentials, no more small talk, now it's essentials of my life, the farmer who tells you things that he hasn't told anyone in 40 years. So the world opens itself. There's a confidence that is given and you... you and not only people, it's also understanding landscapes, understanding... Animals, understanding everything, everything around garbage, you. Understanding the garbage that you see on the side of the, of the road. You read the garbage, the history of the garbage. What was it before? Who used it? Who drank from this bottle? No wonder you did the voiceover for Plastic Bag. Um, well, I was invited uh, by a wonderful uh, young filmmaker, Ramin Bahrami, and um, I immediately had the feeling, yes, uh, if I can assist him, if I'm of any value for him, I'll do it. And he liked my voice. And I said, sure, I'll try my best. But I think of it because the, the, um, the fate of the plastic bag is told with, I mean, it's kind of a modern take on Le Ballon yes. Rouge. It's a new yeah. way of looking at yes. an object. I hadn't it, thought about this, yes, but it's exactly that, yes. How do you read and understand the garbage? And it's part of, of our environment. We it's better part understand of our, it. By the way, yes, I, I mean, there's, there's a huge side like that, but uh, garbage always has had a story. The plastic bag had its maker, and it had the, the person who used it. What was filled in it? Where was it discarded? Uh, how did it fly away in the wind? Uh, what is the story of behind it? And, and when you see garbage on the side of the road, there's always, uh, there's always a story that I try to read and understand. Sometimes tragedies, real tragedies behind little pieces of garbage out there. But I, I, I don't want to focus too much on that, but the world itself in its magnificence uh, and it opens splendor. itself and explains itself, the splendor of, uh, of the world, the same way a man condemned to death driving to, uh, to the death chamber sees Becomes the world for the first, last yeah. time, yes. It's all like the Holy Land, all uh, like Israel, the Holy Land. And make yourself of a veil, make yourself available don't close your eyes to what is in front of you. Yes. I got a place to go in the morning. Going to work. I got a place to go when I ride. Findet anders Fifth Avenue.